So we'll, we'll go ahead and get started here then. So in addition to all the standard functionality found inside SOLIDWORKS, there's several extremely useful tools that are helpful for the metal manufacturing industry. Oh, there we go. Okay, so th these, these tools still use the same intuitive interface that SOLIDWORKS users have come to love, but they're set up to work even faster by automating a lot of the required steps. So ultimately, these tools help create designs that can easily pull the information out for production. This may be a detailed cut list, profiles ready for later cutting, DXF for flat patterns, you know, whatever you require on the metal manufacturing side, we can pull out from these designs. So we're going to be focusing primarily on sheet metal and, and the weld mint tools. So starting with the sheet metal, some of the things we can do here, um, quick and easy 3D modeling, accurate and consistent flat patterns. We'll take into account bend allowance, bend deduction, K factor when we're developing these flat patterns. Automatic relief cuts, look at exporting these files to DXF or DWG, which is common for the manufacturing side. We'll look at the SOLIDWORKS import capability, and we'll even talk about some forming tools. There's many things that, that I'd like to show, but with our, our time constraints here, you know, we'll only be able to highlight maybe what, I, what we think are the most helpful. So here's a project made completely out of formed sheet metal components. Okay, I guess there's, there's a few non-sheet metal parts, such as the wheels and some pins or fasteners. But this, this trailer is made up of about 13 different sheet metal components. So if we take a quick look, more detailed look at some of these parts, um, maybe you focus on this front plate, notice how easily we can isolate and check out its flat pattern. So folding it back up and maybe looking at um, something similar for the, the main component of the trailer. So there's the main tray. Again, it's one piece. You can see how it has the bent corners, flattening out, reorienting it so we can actually see the, the cutouts. And then let's actually look at one of the smaller pieces as well. One of these corner parts, it's got a little bit more going on, but of course the size is much smaller. And so this would be a multi-body but single part file in SOLIDWORKS. So by, by looking at this flat pattern, we're able to check it out and see that there's no interferences. And if desired, we could also show the bend lines, um, but we'll get into that later. So SOLIDWORKS, widely known for its excellent export capability. So if we look back at the flat pattern of this front plate, we can easily export that to a DXF file from the single part file. And we don't need to go through the extra effort of creating a two-dimension drawing first. So looking at these export options, pretty useful options here, so the different version of DXF. So that gives us the ability to match the file to the cutting machine software that will be opening the DXF. Another useful option has to do with splines. If the model has some more oddball edges that might be spline-based, we can have that geometry simplified and converted to polylines. Again, making it more compatible with the cutting machine software. I guess we'll call this just front plate. And as, as we look at these export options at the left, we have complete control of what information is going into this DXF. Usually, if it was just for the laser cutter, we would just want the geometry. The other tooling might want the bend location. Um, to allow me to show our ability to edit this, I'm going to include those bin lines. So a preview window pops up and shows me what the DXF is going to look like. It's not yet actually created the DXF file at this point, so this tool allows me to actually clean up the geometry by removing any lines or edges I do not want. So we'll, we'll show this just by removing those bin lines that I, that I included earlier. This functionality is also useful to remove stuff like stuff that maybe will be later punched, scribed, etched, formed, basically stuff that might not be performed in, in this operation. So after
after that DXF is exported, let's take a quick look at what that DXF looks like. So in this case, I'm going to use eDrawings to open it. Really any, you know, AutoCAD or your other cutter program, but you can see that it looks exactly like the preview we saw. It has a complete perimeter of the flattened plate of that trailer. So returning back to that complete trailer, let's take a look at some of the drawing functionality with our sheet metal parts. So creating a new drawing and placing a few standard views. So we'll do a front, top, followed by a right view. And then let's put a nice isometric view in the corner. And everything can be easily dimensioned. So maybe for this example, we'll add just a few reference dimensions, dimensions for maybe the tray of the trailer. And maybe the, let's see what else would be a good one, maybe the height of the trailer tongue. And we're just doing it through the same smart dimension tool that, that we're familiar with on the part side. And this view still contains the complete trailer, but we'll actually look at grabbing some of the individual components and their flat patterns on some of the additional sheets here. So adding a second sheet with some views of specific components. So for this sheet, maybe we'll do a flat pattern of one of those smaller corner supports we were looking at. So jumping back to the assembly, identifying the piece, telling it which orientation, or in this case a flat pattern. And then as I place it, okay, I can see the border there, scale probably needs to be adjusted. So let's adjust that real quick for the smaller component. And notice the bin notes that are automatically placed. We can adjust their locations, and we can even easily switch to a, a note with a leader if the part's pretty compact like this one. These notes include the direction, angle, and even the radius of that bend. Now, in this one, they all happen to be the, the same radius, um, but we're not limited to, the, to a single size on any single part. All right, let's go ahead and add another sheet to this drawing. Here we're going to continue detailing the trailer. So let's add another flat pattern, uh, maybe this one for the front plate that we were looking at earlier. Earlier we showed how we can remove the bin lines. Uh, for this drawing, let's show them adjusting the scale again. There we go. And then to actually dimension those bend lines, we could use the same dimensioning style we saw earlier, or for this one, let me actually switch to a, an ordinate style. So we can easily call it the location of those bends, a little bit more compact dimensioning method. Notice how the ordinate will automatically jog if necessary. The font size doesn't allow it to fit in. So on a fourth sheet, let's add one more part of interest here. Rather than detail the, the entire component, let's just do one, the entire trailer, let's just do one more. So in this final piece, yeah, we will grab that tongue support. Placing it here on sheet four, once again, I'm going to adjust the scale. And now I'll actually rotate it for better positioning. So we have a lot of flexibility in laying out our drawings. Maybe I'll add a few more overall dimensions. And just like I've been doing that ordinate style, Seems to be an excellent way to call out those bin locations. And as I place these, I'm looking at the bend angle. It would have been a good idea to have adjusted maybe the number of decimal places and unit properties for this one. 
I can also have it dual, do dual units or fractional and even have it specify if I'd like to do any sort of rounding. We'll, we'll revisit that maybe when we get to the weldment side of things here. So you can see laying out our drawings, more specifically you're showing the flat pattern, is easily done once our solid model's been modeled. And so that was a great example where it was already modeled, but let's take a look at where some of those properties come from. So let's take a look at how we can model something using many of these available sheet metal tools. So by creating the first sheet metal feature, I'll have access to some of the properties we were talking about in the slides. Right, this first one, pretty obvious what it's doing. Okay, that's the depth of it. But these other properties, okay, the sheet metal parameters, I can control the thickness and a bend radius. Another very important property is that bend allowance. So this helps me make sure the stretching or shrinking of the material during that bending process is taken into account. And we, as you saw, we could define it with a K factor, bend allowance, bend deduction. We can also use tables for this. So choosing different, different tables here, it filters what parameters we have available, such as the bend radius and the thickness there. So by switching to this steel component, you can see how there's a lot more fields available. And the radius are filtered, again, based on the 16 gauge that I've selected. So looking at those tables in more detail, you can see that the, we'll take a look at the default ones here. The gauge, the thickness, and the available bend radius. So these are the default ones that I'm opening, but you can see how easy it would be to add a new, a new row, um, create a new copy of this. And this is actually a different table. This is, lets us define the bend allowance and the, for the different bend angles and the radius values. There's different K factor values depending on the thickness and the angle. So that, that allows me to put the information in there to, to match my tooling exactly. So continuing this, just so we can take a look at a couple more sheet metal features on the part modeling side, gives a good, good view of how that sheet metal trailer was constructed. But an edge flange, easily added, I just adjust the edges. I click the edge and adjust the sketch at a few quick dimensions. And then you'll see that it creates the, the relief cuts automatically for me. Mirroring this feature, also a simple process. And doing the same command, but in this case, I'll actually pick several edges. You'll notice how they are, they are trimmed, basically mitered in those corners. At the left, I can choose gaps. And you can see that the corner relief cuts are created there. So now let's actually look at some forming tools. So out of the box, SOLIDWORKS contains several forming tools. Now, it's very easy to modify these or create your own. So for this case, we'll add some louvers to that side. It's easy to adjust the direction that it's pushed in from as well as the position with the same dimension tool I've been using earlier. And in the library that comes here, there's some um, embosses, lances, as you can see, louvers here, keyways, cutouts. And then we'll create a simple pattern, create an array of you know, several more of these. And I can just adjust the pattern spacing, quantity. There we go. There's a nice I fit a few more there. There's other ways for me to automatically space those if, if we desire. So in, in addition to the ease of solid modeling, okay, with these sheet metal tools, properties and characteristics of our geometry is also automatically being calculated. So we can see the number of bins, number of cutouts, edge length. This information can be taken into account to help us quote the part. Now SOLIDWORKS does have a costing tool that actually uses this information and automates that process. It's not something we're going to get into today, but definitely um, let us know. Or just more research. We have some great blog posts on it. But it's a very, very useful tool. So we discussed 
exporting flat patterns to DXF files. Now we also have lots of import options. So you can see several different file types here, Aegis, Step, ACES, these are some of the common ones. So these are all things that we can bring into SOLIDWORKS. And then once we bring those in, we can actually convert them to sheet metal, create drawings from them, and actually edit them quite a bit as well. So for this one, I'm going to bring in a Parasolid file. And when I open it, quick diagnostic scan here shows that everything's fine. But SOLIDWORKS is excellent at importing files, as you see, but if this same tool can help repair any problems that, that are encountered. So once brought in, notice there's no relief cuts or no bins in this model. So in order to make this sheet metal, right, make it something we can flatten, we'd like to insert these features. So with this imported model on our sheet metal, one of our great tools, there's another example of missing, right, a cut out there. So one of these great tools is insert bins. And that works for converting a thin wall part like this into something that can be flattened. So we have the same parameters at the left, defining our bend radius, allowance, relief cuts. Forms me that, modif that the geometry is modified slightly to generate those cuts. And if I actually zoom into some of these corners, right, you can see that it converted. It did re uh, replace those sharp edges with ends where necessary. I created the relief cut in that region I was showing you guys earlier. And up here, too. And that relief cut, right, that was one of those parameters. Right? It was set at O'Brown for this shape, and its actual thickness or, or gap there is based on I believe half the material thickness with our settings. So you can notice we can get the flat pattern. And then just like before, we could export this to a DXF if we wanted. Again, avoiding the extra step of having to create a drawing if, if that's all we're after. So there's some great sheet metal tools that we just went through. Now weld mints is another great set of tools here for steel manufacturing. So quick and easy frame design. There's an extensive library of steel sizes already, but it's very easy to add our own custom profiles. When our design has open caps or we need gussets, there's an end cap feature for closing those. Easy to add plate gussets. Mitered cuts and trims are automatically done. And we'll look at cut lists that are automatically prepared as well, similar to a bill of materials. And you can actually include sheet metal parts in our weld mints. So keeping the, the theme with our trailer, let's take a look at a framework similar to this. So WeldMint tools use this structural member command. It allows us to turn simple sketch lines like you see there into pieces of metal. So again, there's an extensive library of common sizes. And I mentioned we can easily add to it. So selecting rectangular tubing, maybe this um, three by two size for this frame. Identify the segments that I want it to follow. And looking at that corner, you'll see that it is automatically mitered. So it's automatically trimmed there. As we add the rest of our outer, outer frame, you'll see that these other pieces are actually auto-trimmed as well. Let's zoom in for a closer look. So it split the pieces based on the pieces that are already there. In some of these other corners, we can actually modify each and each corner individually. So maybe we want you know, a different type of a, maybe a butt joint here in this corner. I personally like the miter, but switching it, you'll see that we can p pick which side is actually still open. So continuing that same thing to these other three corners. We'll look at a more complex example a little bit later as well, where we have more than maybe just two items intersecting. So setting this one up so the outer main rails have open ends, that will make it easy for us to talk about the end caps a little bit later. And then in this spot, if I use that same material, it's a little bit more of a complex notch there. 
and focusing on that piece. Let's actually yeah, zoom in and isolate it as well. So a little bit more of a complex notch there based on the multiple pieces it was running into. So to continue this design, you need to create those additional uh, cross members. So for this one, just use a different material. Maybe I'll use some C-channel. So selecting the sketch segments there, and notice that they don't align exactly how we want, and we actually have complete flexibility with that. So selecting a different portion of the profile to line them up to our sketch. You'll also notice that these currently, since they were done as a separate feature, they do overlap. Okay, there's currently interference. So that one was trimmed. My channel piece is right here. Going to need one more step. And we could run an interference detection here and have the software point that out. But using a, a trim extend tool, I can easily select the pieces that I want to trim. And I can even add a weld gap if desired. So those open corners I was talking about, take a look at what we can do with those. So one of our weldment tools is the end cap made just for this purpose. So when I select that, I have options with how it's positioned, whether it's out over there or if it goes into the part. And if it goes into the part, I can even have it trim that structural member back. Now if I leave it inset like this, I have the option for the material thickness, how far offset it is. And I can actually add either chamfers or fillets within the same tool. So let's add these to the other opened ends at, at all four corners. And this being a solid body, right, I could have patterned or, in this case, mirrored those to save a little bit of effort. Now, if we want to create a plate-style gusset, that's simply done with a gusset tool here in the weldment commands. And we can control its specific position, obviously its size values, and even its shape. So adjusting yeah, the, the position on those two faces, whether it's at the top, middle, or some, some offset to have more flexibility. And I can also even trim a portion of it, right, if I want to cut out a portion of it so that it doesn't interfere with the weld that's going to be in that corner. Adding just one more of these, notice it preserved the same values I just placed in the, in the first one. But another example of something I could have taken advantage of, of mirroring. So there, there's our basic framework. So while we've been designing the frame, right, they've been automatically grouped and noted in the cut list at the left. So renaming those adds some clarity to it, but any edits to our initial skeleton sketch, right, we'll see, um, yeah, we'll see what happens there. But notice in parentheses, it recognized the quantity of that identical component. If there was a left-hand, right-hand version, it would put them as two separate items. If one was cut, we can actually specify, or if one had a hole to drill through it, we, we have control of whether or not we want those identified as the same or as unique pieces. And really that information would be helpful based on, on who this cut list is going to. Right? If it's the guy operating the, the bandsaw, he might not be concerned about the, the holes in one making it look like a separate part. So jumping back to that skeleton sketch, as I've been, been calling it, any edits to this, it's going to instantly update all the steel beams and their cut link that would be seen in a, in a cut list. 
the angle for those, for the miter up there at the, the top of the tongue there, any, any changes at all are going to immediately be reflected in that solid. So it would make it very easy to reuse this design for, for other similar projects. So in that case, really there's only one spot where maybe the notches got a little bit more complex. Just want to do a quick example here, all right, just to show that more complex notches definitely possible with this weld mitt tool. In this case, we have four tubes meeting at a common node here. So getting accurate parts for each piece of tube, right, that's going to make it easy to export these for manufacturing. Maybe these are going to be CNC notched or something. So even though it's a weld mitt, I can kick out each one of these to a different file for that manufacturing, but using the same trim option tool. Let's go ahead and explode these so you can get a better a better view of how I have them set up, but sort of a miter at the bottom, and I have the angled one coming in. So we have completely control of, of what happens at that intersection, as well as sort of the cut order so that we can make it exactly like we want. So here's an example of an assembly file that actually contains both sheet metal right, and weld mitt components. So these steps have folded edges, and you can see that they actually have forming tools in them as well. Show the flat pattern. I'm in our drawings. Yeah, back to our drawing here. Um, hide and show. That's not the drawing. Let me get the drawing. There we go. So I can hide and show parts to add clarity, make it easy to see some components that might be obstructed. The so first page showed the entire assembly there with a bill of materials. Second page, we can show one of the steps in its specific flat pattern, maybe. Obviously, we could call out all the parts here. And then for this third page, let's actually look at a weldment drawing. So if I take just the frame component, notice it does support bends. We didn't get into that in much detail, but you can see bent tubing is possible here. But the cut list that I was talking about earlier, I mentioned that uh, renaming it for clarity. And we can instantly insert this cut list that had been automatically generated as we design the part. So just like we saw with the trailer frame, it's simple to place item balloons. Right? Notice the items are grouped in the cut list. And then item numbers can be called out with a simple auto balloon. And then also you can see the materials description is called out in that cut list as well as the length. In examples where maybe there are miter cuts in our frame example, I could have the angles called out. I can also do individual drawing views of specific components rather than just what we consider the entire weldment frame here. So I, I know we didn't have a whole lot of time, but really just wanted to touch on what I find is, the, I guess, the more exciting and, and more commonly used commands of, of the sheet metal and weldment. So thanks a lot for joining us. Hopefully you guys learned, learned some things there.